got no internet, but what I'm doing is recording it, I'm going to upload it tonight and publish it all tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to go back live, no. There's a culture antenna thing down around here, there's no high speed internet, but I'm going to publish it still, so I'm not turning it on and off in between, I'm just going to cut out the water time. Yeah, don't have to publish it.
Benny can't wear those tights.
time for reflection and the good times and the fond memories we've had with Michael, the young man taken from all of us and much too soon.
Hello and welcome to Blues Basketball Media. I'm Paulo Kennedy joined by Steve Blackley. And it's a big game tonight, the Frankston Blues against North West Tasmania, but it's also a very emotional night for the Frankston District Basketball Association as the whole association and the team pays tribute to one of their sons who has lost this week, Steve. Yeah, tragically, we uh, we lost Michael Chevley, a former Seabull player for the Frankston Blues and junior and a big family in the in the Frankston Blues community and it's been a, a busy week and a, a trying week for the club but um, we've rallied together and um, stayed strong and, and really tried to support the family as well as we can and I think the tribute we did at uh, pre-game um, went off well and um, we'll very, see whether... Very the, emotional tribute, yep. you can really feel that throughout the building. Yep. Michael's father came down onto court and embraced Jake McCauley and Mike McInnes who are great friends yep. with Michael and some emotional scenes and uh, hopefully the guys can go out there tonight and really pay tribute to, to their friend. Yep, and I think they'll, you know, at the end of the day they've got a lot to play for but once the ball gets thrown up I think it's all going to be basketball. Um, the Blues are hungry for a win. Northwest Tasmania are coming off a, a big loss last night up at, up at Mount Gambia so um, we'll see what happens. I think uh, stopping the, the two imports, Garrett Jackson and Gary Johnson is going to be key to the game. That goes a long way towards yep. it, doesn't it? Of course, uh, the Thunder had won five of their previous six games before the trip to Mount Gambia last night where they were thumped by 26 points. So will they be fatigued or will they be really annoyed at their performance last night? Well, I, I did that trip a couple of weeks ago. It's a, it's a hell of a bus trip down. So um, we'll see how they go. The, the other play that hurt us um, a few weeks ago when we were down in Tasmania was, was uh, uh, Lachlan Barker, the big fellow in the middle. So he caused us some troubles down there, so we'll see if we can do a better job of defending him tonight. So it's the Blues first up against some man-to-man -man from the Thunder. They go straight inside to Swatella. There's off the mark. Yeah, blue, blue the Jake early McCauley layoff. getting involved with a steal early on. That's good to see. It was a good first possession. Great position by Dane and just blew the layup. Looking for the, looking for the foul. There was no foul call. Just needs to power it up and and play through any small contact. It's McCauley running the point off to Rob Jones. Now Josh Oswald, who's been one of the solid contributors for the Blues this season. Jones in the low post. Nice feed to Switella. He lost Garrett Jackson on some off-ball action, and the Blues are on the board. It's two to zip after 35 seconds. Beautiful find by, by Rob Jones, and Barker got caught on the screen with the easy layup for, uh, for Switella. Here's Johnson working inside. Tough fall away over Switella, and Switella cleans up the mess. Keep it, keep it simple on that one. Nearly, nearly turned that ball over in transition. Here's Benny Lewis wheeling and dealing into the lane. It rims in and out. Good take. Got to the basket. Just got to finish off. Here's Mason Bragg with the ball, pushing it up. And now Garrett Jackson, who played some basketball for Melbourne United last NBL season. There's two big bodies going on it. Swatella swoops in and McCauley collects the board. Good post defense by Rob Jones there. Was able to hold his ground against Gary Johnson, who's a truck of a person. Two very big units. Rob Jones, his all around game has yep. been pretty and good. That match up there, Rob Jones and Gary Jackson, former St. Mary's teammates. So um, bragging rights are. Uh, we're up for grab tonight. And that was, I was saying, his all-around game's been good. He hasn't been able to get his jump shot to go, but he was feeling good on that one. There's a little bounce in that fadeaway, and it's four to zip to Frankston. Here is Johnson inside. He got a mismatch against Lewis, and he finishes the job. So an upbeat start. Again, looking to go into Jones. He's and got the mouse in the house. Give him some space. He backs his way in. Ooh, he spins, there we go. He finishes, and the best start to a game we've seen from Rob Jones so far. Rob's been solid with us since he's joined the club but we're still waiting for that breakout game. Maybe tonight's the night. So Northwest Tasmania just struggling to get into any offense here as Switella gives a good contest on that jump shot from Jackson. And now Benny Lewis off in transition. Trailing. What's Rob Jones for the trail three here maybe? Nope. Switella. He thinks he's got a mismatch inside and made a nice move just didn't finish the hook shot. Again, great move and just short arm the shot. There's Barker, gives it back to Bragg and some high ball action, but the defense is pretty good from Frankston early. Shot clock into single figures. Betty Lewis with his active hands and 
Another chance in transition for Frankston. This is a different look Blues team than what we've seen at the start of some other games this season. And McCauley, little pick and pop with Jones. He's going to pop along too. Bang. That was always good. He slaps the black armband. He said, that was for you, Michael. And a great start for Jake McCauley. It's 8-2. to two. Fantastic stuff, Jake. It sent chills down the body when he hit that shot. Benny Lewis on Garrett Jackson. There's some good matchups in this one. He skies to the rim, but some really good help defense from Dane Swatella was just enough to put the shot off, and Josh Oswald draws a foul on the rebound, so the Blues looking good. Now, this time last week, we were about 12-0 down, Paulo, if you remember against <laughs> Bendigo. I, I put it out of my mind. <laughs> and um, <laughs> good to see them come out with some, some defensive intensity and are really locked in and, and defending defending well at the... Uh, the end of the end of the basket so good start by the blues this is what you have to do against a team on a road double you've got to hit them hard early don't let them get into that rhythm and, and find their legs especially after they got pummeled last night up at um mount gambier at the ice house loose pass uh -oh, there look from out jones jackson away climbs upstairs for the two-handed cram jam that's eight to four just a little careless on that one hand entry post entry pass so you've got to be careful with that ball so Good Bragg, by Bragg. Bragg all over McCauley there. Now Jones at the top. He likes operating from here. The first to Benny Lewis. Bit of ball screen. Lewis down the middle. Oh, he threw an ambitious pass there to Switella. And it'll be a thunder ball. Right idea, just didn't execute it well. So just a couple of mistakes from the Blues, giving a bit of oxygen to the visitors. And they can close this to a one or two point ball game as Bragg Flies to the basket. Sweet move and just like Mason Bragg. Just like that, a couple of a turnover and a defensive breakdown, and the uh, Northwest Tassie team are back in business. It's no weak side help at all. Amazing how quickly momentum can swing in basketball. Here's Lewis, though, looking aggressive. Ribs in and out for Benny. Oswald inside. That's a strong finish against Gary Johnson. So 10-6. to six. Here's Lockie Barker. Now, is he a dandying on boy originally, Lockie Barker, or am I making no, things no, up? No, there? Lucas Barker, you're Lucas thinking, Barker, thinking of. Yep. That's what Lock I'm thinking of. As Lockie, we see. Lockie went and spent four years at a U.S. college and, and won. Oh, what a move. Captain Dane America flexed the muscles. That was a better finish, Polo. Getting it to the basket, getting the M1. Well, he took some serious contact there, but had the soft touch off the glass. And the thing that set that up was the outlet pass, and it seems. Every time, even after a score, the Blues are looking to get that ball ahead in transition as Mike McInnes... I love that sub, getting Mike in, into the game nice and early and give him, give him a chance to get into the game. Now he was the leading scorer last week. He was outstanding. He was catch and shoot, and it was money from almost anywhere on the court as Swatella finishes the three-point play. And so Frankston... With a promising signs, 13 to 8, 4.45 until quarter time. And look at the defensive energy again. Jones up and in against Jackson. Strong spin move from Johnson, but Swatella just held his ground. And that oh, sort of defense. Me those, he scares me <laughs> on those outlet passes, Dane Swatella. And so Blues again, a bit of buzz about the crowd. Benny Lewis going to the rim and he draws a foul. And that was just simply a case of putting his nose down, getting to the basket, and putting the pressure on the referee. Yeah, they look uh, they look switched on tonight, which is a fantastic, uh, fantastic start. As uh, Declan Suka checks in for Jake McCauley, who gave some good minutes at the start of that quarter. Great start. Declan Suka was very impressive last week for a young fellow. Really nice passing, reads the angles, has composure with the basketball. Yep, can pass the ball and... Hasn't shot the ball well yet, but um, that'll that'll come. And only a young only a young kid that's going back for his uh, his last year of school. So hopefully we see more of him in the Blues in the years to come. So Lucas Simpson into the game for the Thunder as well. I think Coach Wallace has done a good job getting people in nice and early tonight. So as we see Matt Turner just getting ready to getting ready to check in. So here's Joe Chilcott. Little, little extended pressure. Jackson looking to attack it. Swatella gave him an opening, and Sukup will be called for the foul, and the Frankston players have a little disagreement about how that press should have worked. In the meantime, Garrett Jackson will go to the free throw One thing line. I do know, Paulo, Paulo, is someone was in the wrong, someone because they gave the up wrong. 
at the end an uncontested layup. So, well, one of the um, simple rules of defense is ball is priority. Yep. And they made the mistake there of going away from Garrett Jackson, of all people, when he was attacking the basket. Well, he's, had, he's had a breakaway dunk and pretty much an uncontested layup on that one. So, good way to get your confidence going. Misses oh, that one. And missed them. Lucky because uh, I think all three Blues players missed the block out on that one. So I think they're almost thinking it was the first of two free yep, throws. I think they may have been caught out on that one. So a little bit of pressure defense here. It looks like a 1 2 2 from the Thunder. Testing out the young point guard. He makes his way through. I'm sure Mike McKinnis briefly thought about firing that one up, but they're going to run some clock. Shot clock, still 10 seconds left as Sukup goes to work. But this has been, oh, what a Beautiful feed inside. Pass. What about the vision and the touch from Declan Sukup? Beautiful pass. Put it in the right spot, let Benny Lewis do the, do the rest. So here's Bragg. He's looked aggressive off these ball screens. That's a tough floater, though, and good box out from Mike McInnes. The Blues are away. And this has been their modus operandi so far tonight. Give me one, Rob. Come on. Jones misses. Rebound from Chilcutt. But you've got to like the, the mindset and the attitude Frankston are bringing to this game so far. On the most most part, they've been pretty good defensively, so... Well, good defense, Benny Lewis. Benny Lewis suckers the charge foul there out of referee Carey. Benny's had a couple of good weeks defensively and... really trying to lead from the front, um, anchoring our defense, and that's what's going to help him get back into the NBL. Everyone knows how athletic and and how well he shoots the ball, and it's how he plays off the ball, and at the defensive end that... Um, is probably going to get him across the line with an NBL team with some, with some teams still looking at him, I guess, trying to finalise their rosters. Absolutely. Well, if you've got a guy who's 6'8", can shoot and defend with the old 3 and D, there's usually a spot for those guys. It's 17 to 10 here at Frankston. We've been playing six and a half minutes. It's uh, been a high-octane start. I mean, do you, has that been a focus this week for Frankston, to play with a bit bit more freedom well, a bit more energy. I knew they were going to get they knew they were getting a team coming off a, a tough road from command Gambia so you'd like to think that they can um, push the tempo they're up they're up four on the boards already which is a which is a good sign so um, keeping even or or winning the boards is going to be a huge one for them tonight Northwest Tassie with with Barker Jackson and Gary Johnson usually do a, a good job of winning the, the battle of the boards most weeks so the Blues off to a good start with the rebound count. And a, and a nice scoring spread as well with all, all five starters already scored. You know, we, we probably waited a long time for that to happen last week. <laughs> yeah, so last week seems like a long time ago now for this club for a number of reasons. It's a big game tonight to one of Mike Chevalier and so far the energy has been up and about. Playing some great basketball. Here's Mike McInnes, the captain of the team. He was so good last week. He may have earned himself some more minutes. He was into the game early tonight. Here's Jones. Bit of bounce in his step. Oh, nice spin move. In and out spin from get Jones. Get in, Mike. It doesn't go. Mike can't get it. Nice offensive board by Mike McInnes. Rebound finally pulled in, pulled in by Lucas Simpson. There's the Lucas and Brad Simpson in the front court for the Thunder. Here is Brad. Some good defense again from Frankston. Thunder struggling to get in. Offensive foul. Offensive foul drawn. Declan taking, taking one for the team there. Now that's always a good sign about whether your team's up and about. You've got two offensive fouls in the first six or seven minutes. Yeah, they're switched on, ready to go. So 17 to 10, we talked about the women's game. And for those who've just joined us, it was Launceston coming from nine points down in the final quarter to win 84-79 in overtime. And we talked about those moments throughout the game where the Lady Blues could have really extended that lead out. And this is one of those moments right now for the men's team. Seven in front as we close in on quarter time, 2.42 to play. Mason Bragg's a great on-ball defender. He's up in, and about. In ripping Nick as well. Yeah, fit, fit unit. I remember watching him three or four years ago and he was he was built like Declan so um, he's really hit the weight room hard. Here is Declan inside. Get in. Floats past one defender. Chilcott was there to block the shot. He just hung in the air and finished with the right hand and it's 19 to 10 to Frankston. Here's Garrett Jackson. He's looked aggressive. Tough little right-handed pull up. 
And a good defensive board from Matt Turner. Really playing with some energy at both ends of the floor. Benny Lewis on the pull-up. The big truck earns that foul. He sends Lucas Simpson flying to the ground. That's just the second team foul in Frankston so far. So they've played with energy, but they've played smart as well. Jack Wilson checking into the game. Matt Turner takes a rest. So Swatella, Lewis and Wilson in the front court. McInnes and Suk up in the back court for the Blues. Bragg leading the way for the Thunder. Looking for Garrett Jackson. Finds Chilka. Here's a Tim Tim who's checked into the game and immediately has an impact. Big impact straight away. Looked real confident on that shot. Yeah, he just, that was almost Patrick Ewing-like here it on was. NBA night, the way he it's just squared up and fired. He said, if you're not going to get a hand up, I'm going to have that all day. So Hand down, man down, as they say. And here's Benny Lewis driving, spinning. It's a good help defense there. Now Lewis goes again. Now he travels. Stayed, that ball stayed in that corner. Smatello, when he got that release pass, should have swung it to the top and try and get a ball reversal and get it out of that deep corner. There's something we saw from the Launceston women's team. Their yeah, they ability to good. move the ball from side to yeah, side. They were outstanding at doing that. And that one, great catch there in the corner from Chilcutt. Dane Swatella gets his hand on the ball. Chris Reed, some x-ray vision and calls the hands foul. That's the third team foul. It's 19 to 12. The Blues lead it. We've got 91 seconds until quarter time. Chilcott's an outstanding junior player. Was in the uh, under-20 Tasmanian team that um, nearly beat Victoria in the gold medal game a couple of years ago. Here's so Patrick Ewing again in the form of a Tim a Tim. That one's off the mark. He has that Patrick Ewing shot, doesn't he? It does. Cutting through Jack Wilson, firing with confidence, and great to see him shooting with a bit of confidence. And the word confidence is the uh, probably something they haven't had all year, but they really do. They're not thinking about it, they're just pulling the trigger, playing off feel instead of, oh, that's a tough shot. There's some good defense from Jack Wilson, and now the Blues are away. Suk up in the open floor, McInnes, oh, he look. finds Wilson, who's feeling good, he fires, but it's long. And maybe Benny Lewis on the left was the best option there. It's Bragg, good defense from Suko. That'll be a foul underneath, so a Tim, a Tim will go to the free throw line. It was a tough one because Lewis was, was probably a little, guarded a little closely more than um, Wilson. Wilson just hit a shot. I think I think Coach Wallace would be happy with either one of them, but um, really getting some heavy rotations tonight, which is fantastic. Yeah, let's hope that continues throughout the game, especially, you know, there's only nine players here for the Thunder uh, making this trip. So they don't have a deep bench. They've had a big loss last night. You've got to try and run them off the floor. And so far defensively, it's been a great start. The help for Frankston has been really good. Tim, Tim really getting going. So three quick points for the big man from Launceston. And some pressure defense there. And Mason Bragg not surprisingly leading the way. As McCauley dances around the ball screen and Swatella down the middle. That could have been a foul there on Lucas Simpson. It wasn't called. It'll be a thunder ball. Big possession here. Last, last, last play defensively and probably a seven second differential. So he should be able to get the ball back as Captain America comes up with a big play. Oh, it dies on the, on the floor. floor. Oh, and a foul's been called. Dane Swatella as we get some applause for the first time this season in the commentary Look box. Look at that diving for the loose ball. <laughs> Fantastic play. They'll, they'll need to get a super soaker to wipe up that floor. <laughs> Dane Swatella, one of the heaviest sweaters going around in the competition. Fantastic effort. And that's the hustle we want to see from you, from your prized American recruit. Getting Absolutely. On the, getting some floor burn and, first and earning second a couple effort. of free throws. Yep. And then the presence of mind to throw that ball ahead. It was well, going to be a highlight. two points. Yep. Now let's see if he can make the most from the free throw line. There's 20 seconds to go. It's an eight point lead. Until he takes a deep breath. Not surprised. Good start for the import. He makes the first free throw. Probably the, the, the best quarter Dane's had for a couple of games now. So fantastic to see if he can keep that momentum going for the rest of the game. And he, his game is so much about energy, isn't he? He's yep. not a finesse footwork, low post player. He's rebound, block shots, defend. He's, he's one of those players that if he gets off to a good start offensively, if he makes his first shot or two, he's usually up and about. He can drop his head a little bit when um, 
when he gets off to a rough start. So fantastic signs for the Blues. So the shot clock is switched off. Jake McCauley giving Tyler Kelly some trouble after he checked into the game for his first burn. They go inside to Simpson. Oh, good defense from Jones to cut off that backdoor pass. And Swatala stands firm. And that's a fitting end to the first quarter for the way the Blues have gone about this game. They lead it 23 to 13 after 10 minutes. The fans give them a round of applause as they head to the huddle. The huddle. And Steve, you're a happy man. Yeah, probably the, probably the best quarter they've played in two or three weeks. So fantastic signs. I love. I think both coaches did an outstanding job of getting heavy rotations, which is which is good to see. Bench players like to get in early, and I think the Blues probably got some some good contributions as as did Northwest Tasmania, but um, I think defensively to hold a team like Northwest Tans Tasmania to 13 points is um, an outstanding start. Absolutely. Two charges, some great rotations, some contested sh shooting. And the push, the push off turnovers and missed shots and even made shots, just getting the ball out ahead in transition. And if a good shot has appeared, they've taken it. Yep. Yeah, we saw Jack Wilson was the prime example, that catch and shoot and transition, and he, he buried it. It's Vitala off to a great start, seven points and and four rebounds, which is which is outstanding. But to get five, seven score, seven players already on the score sheet, um, points wise, is uh, an awesome start for the for the Blues. Absolutely. From the Northwest Tassie point of view, they would not be happy being down ten. I mean, is their approach going to be some of that pressure defense that that did trouble the Blues a little yeah, bit? Maybe maybe looking to go at that for a little while, and it did kind of slow them down. So, slow them down. So I think they, the Blues have done a great job on on Jackson. Although he's got a made a couple of field goals, they got a couple of cheap ones on some on some fast breaks, and everything else for him has been really contested. So they've done a great job with him, and even even Johnson hasn't had his own way, and has had to work hard for a couple of points that he's scored as well. So um, they're definitely not getting it um, getting it easy, which is which is a great sign for the Blues. As he Coach Wallace goes back to the to the starting lineup, they got off to such an impressive start. Probably something that's been really impressive for Frankston is the interior defense of the two imports, Rob Jones and Dane Swatella. They've really held their ground, defended with their bodies, and, yep. and not allowed the bigs for the Thunder to get any easy scores. No, absolutely. So we're back underway. It's 23 to 13. Just the start we were hoping for, just the response from the Blues after last week's disappointing performances. McCauley up and in against Kelly. He's once really again. locked in defensively, Jake. Now here's the matchup. Johnson v. Swatala. A splash from Gary Johnson. That you was know nice. what? You'd, you'd, have to, you'd have to live with that. It was a contested 15 foot jump shot. It's an impressive specimen, isn't he? Really, really well put together. That foul's going to be caught on Garrett Jackson. He was saying Rob Jones had that's locked his, his arm in. Foul. That's huge. He's going to have to go and sit for the rest of the quarter as Coach Phil Thomas shakes his head and. A little bit like, oh, you know, he's a little bit quicker than, um, a little quicker than Mike Brookins. Got, got that sub in before he picks up a fourth in the second quarter, and I don't think we'll see him again before halftime. No, and I think unless, that unless unless the Blues go on a run and they they can't leave it any any longer. But that's a huge play in this game. I think there was a heads up play there from Rob Jones as Chilcott comes up with a steal, and the Blues almost burp it up. Thankfully, they're going to get it back. So Teller decides to play a little bit of point guard before handing off to McCauley. Just find the point guard. Jones in the three. Jones feeling good. Catch and release from three Rob ball Jones. in the corner pocket. He was psyched about that one. Huge players. Coach Wallace wants to extend the pressure a little bit. Huge chance for them to make a run right here. If Rob Jones can get that shot going, the Blues become a different team. If he can stretch that defense. Here he is guarding Simpson and McCauley with the good steal defense, against Kelly. Jake. That's a... Four on three, pulls out. Here's Swatella. Takes it straight at Johnson and, and finishes. It. What a move inside from Dane Swatella and, and some great patience Coach from McCauley. Coach Thomas, I think, looks stunned. Sitting down there, not knowing whether to bust the timeout straight after the start of the second quarter. His best players on three fouls. It's going to come to a point where he might have to pull the trigger as a deflection off Hench. He's quick to get Josh Mason Oswald Bray yep. back into the ball game, which I think is a good move. Yep. Jake McCauley's eyes lit up as soon as he saw Tyler Kelly carrying the basketball. It must be tough on um, Coach Phil Thomas not having an assistant down there to, to bounce ideas off. He is doing a reasonably good Lindsay Gaze impersonation yep. at the moment, trying to stay relaxed. 
Chilcott and the Chilcott get it off violation. Time. They're completely out of rhythm offensively, and the Blues are locked in defensively. Maybe a zone for the Northwest Tasmania. What are they called? They've got a long name. The the uh, Tall Timber Thunder. Do we, do we go with the Thunder? It's a bit easier, what? isn't it? <laughs> the Tall Timber. Is, is that their name or is I'm that a sponsor? Sure. I'm not. Yeah, it's a. I think it is the Thunder, but I, yeah, I think it might be the Thunder with. Of course we'll go with the Thunder. It's the Bendigo Bank. Karen Jones Downs three and again. Look good off the hand too. That would have really hurt the. The Thunder. Here comes Bragg. We've been impressed with him so far. He plays with a real purpose and energy as Johnson spins inside. That's a man-sized move from Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson had a stellar career at the University of Texas, I believe, and big-time player. Benny Lewis is off the mark. That would have got the fans yep, involved right Coach there. Coach Wallace has seen enough of shit and long jumpers, I think. He wants to get them back to stick with the systems. A little bit like the Lady Blues who got out to that nine-point lead and Went away from what worked. The Blues off ball defense, their help and positioning is outstanding here tonight. We haven't seen that so far this season. And Tim Tem has been impressive off the bench for the Thunder. He has, looks aggressive. Dane Swatella battling inside with Gary Johnson. Rob Jones from the other corner, <laughs> same result. Rob Jones with another triple. He is up to 10 points already. And he doesn't look like the man who struggled to stick his jumper in his opening few games for the Blues. And doing an outstanding job defensively as well. It's look at that moving. Look at that. Oh! Got his hand in, just caught Simpson on the wrist, and he's pinned. But I, think he knew, I think he knew he fouled him. Got a little bit of, little bit of arm in there. And it's and often, often a bit of a giveaway when the ball squirts upwards. But 31-17 to 17 is the scoreline. We've played just three minutes in to the second term. It's been an enterprising start. Garrett Jackson checks back into the ball game as we have a timeout here. Well, so I think it's the right move by um, Phil Thomas. This game's sliding and like, if you if you coach Wallace right now, he probably doesn't recognise that he's switched in, but be going straight at Garrett Jackson. I'll be getting some isolations on the low block because he can't go near him. If he picks up a fourth foul, he's probably done till halfway through the third quarter. So, Absolutely. But it is at a, it, at a crucial stage. It's, it's one of those ones, if you sit him on the bench and all of a sudden the league gets out to 20, you say, why didn't I put him in? And um, I think he's probably making the right decision. But um, yeah, the Thunder, I'm, I'm, I really think they need to, need to look at a little bit of zone. Maybe well, with Jackson back in, that's I the opportunity so. to do it. But It probably needs to be a 2-3 zone to give Jackson that bit of bit of backup along the baseline. But uh, Jones, 4 or 7, 2 or 3 from the from the three-point line with 10 early points and some fantastic, definitely the, the best defensive game he's played so far this this season as well. So so here's 10, Dane Swatella with nine and Benny Lewis with four for the Blues and for the Thunder. It's Gary Johnson with six and Garrett Jackson with four. A Tim, a Tim with three points in his limited minutes on the court, but there really haven't been a lot of players, yep. apart from the two imports, who have been able to create shots for yep. others. Big, big Angus Howie just checking in for the Blues. He must be giving up about... He picks up a foul before he's, before the clock even starts. I think that was um, well played by Gary Johnson. I think it's just a nothing call. He, he ran, almost ran into Angus himself. Yeah, he did. It was smart he's play. Low, he's smiling. He knew he, Angus didn't do a thing. He ran and he hooked, him, hooked the arm. Angus, Angus has played zero seconds for one foul. <laughs> But he's got, he's got about 20 kilos on Angus, so Angus is going to have to use his length. So I'll be going into Gary Johnson every possession in here if I could. Chilcott with a rush shot, the shot clock on seven. Good job, Angus Howie. Howie, with the rebound. He was impressive last weekend in limited minutes and really come back an improved player after his, uh, his first, second year of college basketball. Here's the Macaulay Bragg matchup, which we've enjoyed so far in this one. Take him off the dribble, get him in foul trouble. So a bit of pick and roll action. Jones wants the ball in the post. He wants a bit of isolation, fades, middle, it just goes in and out. And this is a key moment. The Blues can finish this game right here and now in the six minutes before half time. So you see Johnson, he has got scoring on his mind. That yeah, he just said, I'm taking move. it to the rack on Angus. I think Angus just needs to hold the fort, you know, for the next probably two minutes, and then I think you'll see Spatella get back in. And Yeah, I don't think... I don't think Coach Thomas is going to be sitting Gary Johnson down anytime soon. He's, he's going to roll the whole 40 if this is a close game. He makes the first. 
Seven points for Gary Johnson. And he's really started to stamp his influence on in this second quarter. He can feel that his team is slipping out of this ball game. This is the second. Now he taps it out of bounds. So another opportunity here. They can close this back to 10 or 11 points. Interesting colour uniforms, Paulie. The, is it the gold he, and the Are you going to tell me what colour that is? I don't know. Yeah, it's a... Um, it's unique, that's for sure. Jackson to the pull-up. What a move from Garrett Jackson. It'll be interesting to see if he gets some interest from NBL teams this year with the three-import rule. I'm sure he will. He, he impressed when he played a few games with the United and he'd be an ideal third import, I'd, I'd suggest. Well, he does all the little things. Here's Rob Jones doing the big things inside. Third effort from Jones. It rims out. Howie inside, but he's committed the foul. Rob Jones slaps his hands in exasperation. And I think you would say that was a man-sized move inside, but he couldn't finish. So, 11-point ball yeah, game. Hank, poor Angus just shaking his head. Picked up two fouls in, in about a possession and a half. I but think he better get that's ready. That's right, he's got five fouls to use tonight. Gary Johnson's probably going to go at him again here on this possession. He has an intense look on his face. He realises he's got a mismatch down low that as was, we see some That was a basket that, that Rob Jones will be kicking himself later in the game. Two really good looks. Look, look, for, the, look for the deep seal. Look at that. Goes inside. Howie with the third foul. And he may have wore one in the mouth on that one too. He just went, he just said, I'm... What do, what do they say? Don't take court here to a grown man's party. <laughs> he just looked at that mismatch and said, yep, I'm going to work. And Grant Wallace just puts a smile on his head and said, welcome to the Seville, young man. <laughs> Hit that, weight, hit that weight room when you get back to college. and um, But it's a great opportunity, great learning experience for Angus. Coming up against one of the, one of the best imports, the best big imports in the, in the league. So. No question. And Dane Swatella yeah. checks back into the game, yeah. not surprisingly. Angus Howie goes to the bench. Let, let's, Coach see, Wallace. let's see if Gary Johnson wants to try and bully uh, Dane Swatella now. Coach Wallace gave Angus just a wry smile, gave him a, a little low five and said, hey, Bad luck, big fella. A little bit of full court pressure again. It's Mason Bragg being a pest to Rob Jones. Some good defense there. But they'll go back inside to Rob. He likes this matchup. I don't think he cares who's guarding him tonight. He's going to spin, fade, and shoot. It's Swatella big inside. Rebound. Extra pass to Oswald. He's feeling good. He squares up, fires, and connects. It's a three-point make, and there is a foul on the rebound court on Brad Simpson so Frankston will get the ball back and after the margin had been Jeez. trimmed back to nine, Huge that's a big play, play. In the game. what about the confidence of Josh Oswald shooting that, he didn't second guess that at all he's been shooting the three ball a lot better at practice how did he get the two free throws I don't know, I thought, he, I thought no, Spatella was lining up for free throws there for a second I thought no that can't happen I think that was just Dane being hopeful as Jones thinks about firing. So does Oswald. They're going to run some clock. Their offensive execution has been really solid so far tonight. Jones oh, with the feed pass. to Sotala. The second or third time tonight he's found his fellow import and the margins back out to 14. And that's just that chemistry that you get after you're playing for a few weeks together and probably took a, taken a few too many weeks to, uh, to get it, but tonight showing good signs. Good, by the two imports. good switching defense there from the Blues along the baseline to cover Jackson. Eventually he gets free, but Swatella helps out this time. Good defense by Oswald. Shot then. clock at two. Tough shot. Worky Barker, though, nails it. Right on the shot clock buzzer. He elevated, fired, and he keeps his team in the game. That was a bad defensive um, play on the pick and roll then. There's 22 seconds of super defense. It's the last two that mattered in the end. Now Benny Lewis wants to go right back at Barker. Oh, he spins oh, in midair and makes it. Everything dropping for the Blues tonight. That's the sort of shot that Benny Lewis can make. He was facing the wrong way when he elevated. Now here's the matchup we want. Johnson and Swatella. Look at the big men bang inside. Nice up fake. And some help from Rob Jones. But Gary Johnson is starting to roll. Dane, Dane had him where he wanted him and then he... Bought one of those shot fakes, and that was all over after that. Absolutely. Swatella going back at Johnson the other way, but doesn't get it. I this like is that. The matchup. Won that matchup. Spins, draws the foul. It 
doesn't quite fall. So Teller was screaming for that ball, but it, even if he gets it down low, it's a hard matchup against Gary Johnson. But I think Rob Jones showed some patience and said, let's um, let, let's use that mismatch with Ben. He's probably got three or four inches on him. I oh, see. So you keep going back to that matchup yep. until Launceston make the and change. I think they've which made they the do. change to put a Tam a Tam on him. I'd still like to see Benny attack the young Atem Atem as well. We'll see where the we'll see where the Frankston here go to a little bit of full court pressure because it is a, a taller lineup that the Thunder have gone to. But perhaps with Suka McInnes and, and Lewis as the three perimeter players for the Blues, it's probably not their best pressing lineup on at the moment. So we're just wiping up some sweat on the floor. So Dane Swatell has got 11, Rob Jones has got 10. Angus Howe has four fouls. But probably the big news on the foul front, Garrett Jackson, the star import for the Thunder, with three fouls. We've still got 3.27 until half time. Gary Johnson starting to fire. He's got 11 points and three boards, and Jackson with eight points himself. And those two are going to be the key if, if the Thunder are going to come back into this one. Absolutely. Big three and a half minutes leading up to the half time break. 13 point lead, let's see if they can execute down down the stretch before half time. So Jones banging with Johnson down low. Oh, nice feed from travel. Johnson to a 10. He's called for a travel. Even on NBA night, he couldn't get away with that one. Well, that should be Reed allowed. The referees, the referees probably didn't get the memo about NBA <laughs> night. So. so Rob Jones running some point guard. Now Benny Lewis, let's see what he does in this matchup with the Tem Tem. He's probably got a bit of a speed yep. mismatch here. A little horn action here. Oh, oh, he thinks about firing for three, but Johnson did enough to deter him. And now Jones is going to work. Here is Lewis. Oh, he should let that one fly. Shot clock down to six. Johnson with the steal. Uh -oh, He's doing look out. everything at the moment. Simpson takes it strong and a nice finish inside there from Brad Simpson. And Lewis, had, to Lewis had his chance to let one fly but um, chose not to pull the trigger and end up turning it over. It's not like Benny to pass a shot up. Swatella just bangs inside. but Had no awareness where the basket was on that one. A and a tech foul by... Rob Jones called for the tech. He said, I was talking to my teammate. But that was some clever... That was almost the Rick Mahorn defense from a Tem Tem. Took the chair out. Took the away chair out. And... Will this be a crucial moment in the game as we get a timeout? It's 40 to 29, 233 until half time. One of the more experienced referees in Australian basketball called the tech power, Rob Jones, pleading that he was talking to his teammate. So um, I think Chris was uh, a little bit worried there as well. I think he, he may, may have blew the whistle a little bit too early, I think. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a strange one. There was no. It was away from the away from the action, and well, there were reports last NBL season the referees were instructed not to call technical fouls unless it was absolutely necessary. The league wanted the emotion of the yep. players reacting, but that memo obviously hasn't Didn't slid down, down to, to the, the Siebel level. To the Siebel, so um, yeah, but it's forty to twenty nine, and we spoke a few minutes ago about the Blues having the opportunity to put this game away by half time. They haven't done that. The momentum has swung back to Northwest Tasmania. And this is a crucial two and a half minutes. If this is a six or seven point ball game at half time, this, this becomes anyone's game. Whereas the Blues can extend this out to 15 or 16. It's a long way back for a team that played last night. Absolutely, and that's why that it was a big play, that tech foul. And I guess they're gonna close the quarter out. And that momentum going into the half time breaks huge for the Blues because they'll, you know, like you said, if they, if, if they go up six or eight up, they'll feel that, um, and yeah, they'll feel that all the hard work that they've done has kind of been for nothing just to have a six-point lead where they've, they've controlled this game for, you know, almost the entire the entire game. So Now, is it time to run a couple of plays for Mike McKinnis, try and get him a couple of looks? He, if he's wide open, he doesn't miss too many. He gets the crowd involved, and he was hot last week. Is he a guy you'd look for, or would you go to others and then have him feed off him if, if the Thunder double team? I'm not sure if you'd go run and play for Mike. I think just... Just, just play, just get through their sets. I'm sure Grant Wallace would have told him what he wanted for the next couple of possessions. And you know, I still like that that matchup of um, Lewis and the Tim, Tim. I think he could probably maybe exploit that one a little bit as well. So horn sets from the Thunder, which they've been running for most of the night. Mason Bragg defended by Sukup. 
Now, why wouldn't you go back inside the Gary Johnson? Let's see what Swatella does this time. He holds his ground and Johnson misses, and that's why you don't buy up, fakes. And now the Blues, Benny Lewis says, let's slow it down. Really important possession. Little horn set with Mike McInnes at the top. He's going to rub over the top from Jones. He had the opportunity to fire that. He passed it up. And now Swatella muscles inside to the right-hand finish. A quick, strong move from Dane Swatella. He's up to 13 points. Great, great move by Swatella. Finished strong and huge possession here as well. Jackson dancing his way into the lane. He feeds his fellow import. And Johnson finishes. He's tough, isn't he? Down low. <laughs> He's such a good player. You know, we hear so much It'll about this. I mean, someone like Gary Johnson as well could be an interesting one as a third import, as a, a backup big that's just a big body. Oh, nice move from Benny Lewis. He was behind the backboard. He elevated out from underneath it and finished. And, and I agree with you about Johnson, especially a team that might have a finesse centre like Adelaide, for example, with Daniel Johnson. As That time it's an offensive foul with the shoulder square and Dane Swatella's chest. And Gary Johnson with a smile on his face saying, let us bang, referee. But yeah, a team like Adelaide with a Daniel Johnson as their centre, yep. this is... He's almost the anti-DJ. He plays a different sort of game. Maybe he'd be a good fit there. The only, the only uh, slide on him might be he's probably only 6'6", six, six, maybe 6'7". Six, Whether he's a little little undersized in that role in the uh, in the NBL, but he's got the body and the nice outside touch as well. So I think teams could do a lot worse. Absolutely. And, and Joey Wright at Adelaide has that history of liking smaller big men with a bit of bulk and oh, what a move from Lewis he looked a slice through a gap he couldn't get the call and yeah, now the sure thunder away in transition Lucas Simpson fires and misses right. so run something here and get a good look right here so McCauley back into the ball game for Sukup get it through hands and take the best available shot just get a running nice little set here's McCauley thought about firing penetrates That's a good look finds oh. Jones but would have been a good shot then little miscommunication oh. now McInnes Along the baseline. And there we go, Mike's going to get to the free throw line. Good penetration. And Mike just a little reluctant to fire tonight. Yeah, Looking to penetrate in, instead. Yeah, just kind of open for a second and then yeah, they closed out with a hand up. But good penetration there. See if he can knock down two before the, uh, the halftime break. I think the last couple of possessions we've seen, you know, open jump shots for the role players for Northwest Tasmania. They're going to have to nail those. They're going to get back into this game. And there's only so much that Jackson and Johnson can do. Mikey makes the first one. And the second. So 46 to 31. It's a 15 point ball game. Blues have put the foot back down. It came back into nine. It was looking like dangerous territory. But really, the, the import pairing for Frankston, they've been the two that have almost driven the car tonight. They've played with some real energy. They have their, uh, at both ends of the floor too. That's, the, that's been the impressive thing. We've regularly seen opponents here at the House of Blues up in the high 40s or even 50s at yep. half time and 32 seconds to go until the break, only 31 points for the Thunder. That tells the story and that's generated a lot of offense yep. the other way as well. The, the, other, the other key factor tonight is um, Spatella, Jones and Lewis all in double figures by half time. So again, Brad going at McCauley, really enjoying the energy from those two players tonight. Jackson to the low post, they can't find him. Now Bragg with seven on the shot clock, feeds it to Simpson. Big That's rebound. Ah. Inside. So Lucas Simpson kicks it out. And that he needed to come up with play. that board, really needed to come up with it. Here's Jackson against Lewis, steps back for three, tough shot. It went in and out. Rob Jones from three quarter court. He throws it too far. <laughs> too headed over the head <laughs> shot. <laughs> Only Rob Jones could have. That was a great, far. great last contest on Benny Lewis on that three. The three ball still went in and out, but he, yeah, he got that hand right up on the shot, and that was fantastic. So the best half of basketball from the Blues this season. They lead at 46 to 31 after 20 minutes. Dane Swatella with 13 points and five rebounds. He's on track for a double double. Rob Jones with 10 points. Benny Lewis with 10 points and four boards himself. So it has been. 
quality contributions from a number of people. Joss Oswald with five points and three boards. And for the Thunder, Gary Johnson. We've been so impressed with him. 13 points on five of nine shooting to go with his three boards. And Garrett Jackson with eight points, but he's been quietened a little bit by foul trouble. So it's where the Blues want it. It's been their style of game so far. Come back in about 12 minutes time for the second half. Let's see if they can finish the job. Fantastic.
no. <laughs> We are back underway here in the third term. It's the Blues leading by 15. I'm Paul O'Kennedy, joined by Steve Blackley on Blues Basketball Media. In the opening night of the season, there was a home win over Albury Wodonga. It's been slim pickings at home since, but Jake McCauley's feeling good. He nails a triple. It is an 18 point lead for the Blues. And Steve, what a perfect start to the third quarter. We have a great start. Got the crowd behind us in that for the start of this third quarter and the bench was up and about. Johnson going back at Swatella. Oh, he's his own, his own player found him. <laughs> he got a hip and shoulder from a teammate. Lewis skies in the open floor. Some good defense there though. Swatella comes back. He's surrounded. Lewis, McCauley, extra pass to Oswald. He takes it strong. Johnson fouls him from behind. Some outstanding ball movement from the Frankston Blues and they've come out just as fired up in the second half as they were to start the well, game. Well, that's a key key to this game, how they came back out after halftime, the emotions of uh, the pre-game and getting off to a great start in the first half. You know, that 15-minute halftime is a little, a little longer than most with most teams. And it's a, we've had some quarters here in the House of Blues in the third where we've got off to a slow start, but getting that momentum early can really put a dent on the... Uh, the Thunder's hopes of getting back into the game as they extend the lead, nearly this free throw go out to 20 points. Oswald. We haven't seen a margin like this since round one since against Aubrey. Since round when the Blues blew the bandits out of the water and then held on in the last quarter to secure the victory. I'm sure the fans here will be hoping it's not quite so tight this time. Spatella's Sp defense has been fantastic. Gary Johnson, how many points has, has Gary got? Gary's got 13. 13. He, he probably hasn't had too many of them on um, Swatella. I think the thing that Dane will like is six rebounds to three for Johnson. He's little definitely winning that Little 2-3 zone action here by the, um, by the Thunder. Ball movement again is good from Frankston. Swatella, Jones inside. Look how they've spread the defense. It ends with Benny and Bang. Benny Lewis nails the three. 54 to 31 it is party time in the House of Blues. At this point, the Thunder just don't have the answer. Lindsay Gaze on the bench looks shocked, doesn't he? He certainly does. Here's Lockie Barker looking to create. It's a nice dump off, and eventually the layup from Brad Simpson falls. Northwest Tasmania open their account for the second half, but they're down by 21. They stay in this 2-3 zone. Rob Jones flies to the floor. The shot clock down to 10. Not as good an offensive set this time. But McCauley gets open. He's 2-2. Two two. He's 3-3. Three three. Jake McCauley with his second triple of the half. He is up to eight points. He's feeling good. He's doing oh, it for his buddy in, Michael. Inspired basketball. Jake just doing it at both ends. Oh, nearly comes up with the steal. <laughs> no, no one... No one in this uh, Blues team works harder than Jake McCauley on and off the court. And fantastic to see him get the results tonight. Stepping up in the in the uh, the place of the missing Corey Maynard as well. So yeah, quite the, incredible the Blues have played this good a basketball without their starting point guard. Of course, Tom Wilson has headed off to St Mary's University yeah, as but well. Heard, for, heard from Tommy during the week as well. He's really enjoying his um, his start to SMU. He can't believe the intensity and and how hard they train. They're, they've just got on court for some, um, I guess, non-structured um, training sessions, but a lot of fitness work. And not, he didn't say that he was enjoying the schoolwork as much <laughs> as, um, as anticipated, but fantastic to see him off to a good start in, on his career out at, um, out at uh, SMU. He definitely said he's been watching the live stream, so shout out to Tommy Wilson. Fantastic. He's keeping a close eye on the Blues and checks in, checks in each week. And we have been missing you, Tommy, but not yep. tonight. The boys have got it covered. <laughs> He would, he would have been proud of his brother knocking down a couple of jump shots early in that um, in that second quarter as well. So, but 23 point lead to the Blues. I'm in, I'm in shock, Paul. I didn't didn't see this one well, coming. I was hoping for a good performance, but um, 23 points. My goodness. Before we came on air, I said to you, "Can they do it tonight?" And we both wondered. We hoped, but uh, we didn't see this coming. And let's see over the final 17 or 18 minutes of this game if they can maintain. A lot, kind of lot, of, lot of ex Blues players here tonight, um, which is fantastic for the for the Michael Chevrolet 
tribute as well. So playing some inspired basketball in front of some of the Blues alumni as well. Here's Jackson curling around the screen, but Benny Lewis does enough to deter the shot. But except for a couple of breakaways, everything Jackson's had has been contested. Great ball movement again. Long. Oswald fires, but it was just a little off to the left on that one. So Jackson still looking to play this one out. The Rob Thunders. Jones definitely getting the uh, the better of that St Mary's matchup. Barker inside now. Simpson to the pull up. That's a nice move and a nice finish off the window from Brad Simpson. Maintains the margin at 21. The Blues, there's still a real purpose about them. Jake McCauley giving all sorts of directions out there as Lewis wants that matchup. McCauley, now he finds him. Shot clock at five. But you can hear Ricky Baldwin calling down the shot clock. Well, that one was short. He liked the odds of shooting yeah. over Barker that time. He Not a great possession. When you have a bad possession offensively, you need to come down and get a stop defensively. So, uh, so at least they get that stop there and they can um, make amends for their last trip down. So McCauley this time says, slow down, fellas. Let's run a set. There you go, the ball screen with Josh Oswald. Oh. Rob Jones. And is, is that a shoulder for Garrett Jackson? He's certainly wincing in pain as Sotelo will finish inside. Beautiful pass by Benny Lewis off the backboard. <laughs> and Garrett Jackson's in quite a bit of discomfort. His right arm is just dangling down by his body. I don't know if he copped a stinger. It could be a funny bone injury. He's just doing everything. It's a good help there from Jones. Passed that one with his left hand. So Bragg for three. It's off the mark. He follows it up. But he can't get it back. Yeah, so that's a strange one with Jackson. Is it a? I don't think it's a finger. I, did, I think you I think you're right. It's a maybe a stinger because he's not coming out of the game. Or is he? Now I've got Lucas Simpson. Yep, Garrett yep. Jackson's going to have a rest. And it's hard to see whether he's clenching a finger or whether it is shoulder related or whether it is just some sort of stinger. Garrett's got um, quite a few fans here tonight that um, got some tickets through me that from his United, Melbourne United um, season this year and actually got sold a box to a um, to a family wanting to come and see Garrett play. So he's Bragg, look at him take it on. Can't Good job, Mike McKinnis on the boards. Great contested shot by Benny Lewis as well. Mason Bragg went Bragg. up to level two and Lewis went up to about level four on <laughs> that did. possession. Well, Mason Bragg hasn't given this one up, but McCauley with some nice penetration. And it opens up a driving lane for Lewis. He finishes and he draws the foul. And once again, some really good offensive execution from Frankston. And I think Lewis has been had a great mix-up between perimeter stuff and getting to the basket tonight. Really found that, that balance between the two. In the last couple of weeks, probably settled for the for the perimeter game a little bit more, but he probably had to match up his life all night with a younger fella on him and getting into that paint and getting him to bite on some of those up fakes and had an outstanding game so far. So 15 points now for Benny Lewis, and the lead is 25. And he adds one to both those figures. And we've still got 5.14 until three-quarter time. It's a real chance for the Blues to run themselves into form over the last quarter and a half of this one. The Blues have got great, great minutes out of both point guards. With Declan on at the moment for McCauley. McCauley's had an outstanding game. Good defense from Jones, getting the hand in. Johnson Good against Swatella. Good defense again by Swatella. And Better this time offense, he gets so. it to roll. And it may have been a one-sided game, but that battle's been worth the price of admission alone. As Lewis to Jones, he's feeling good. He pops from the top. Johnson inside, gets the board. The Thunder have allowed open shots all game. Oh, a tough step back from Johnson. And left it a little short. And it's almost like their priority has been guarding the paint. And perhaps they haven't paid enough respect to the Blues shooters. The Blues 5 of 11 from the three-point line. Good yeah, great extra him. pass. McInnes gives it back to Jones. He oh. misses. He clangs it off the backboard. I think the crowd was wanting Mike McInnes <laughs> to shoot that one. You may have heard some of the groans and the effects, Mike, as you see a tough pull up from Barker and Swatella inside, and that'll be a thunder ball. The two big men going at it once again on the on the glass. Speaking of big men, Matt Turner checks into the game and is 
Going to throw some weight around against Lucas Simpson. Here's the matchup. We're going a two point guard lineup for the Thunder with Tyler Kelly checking in alongside Mason Bragg, who has had a pretty solid game. Just two points for Mason, but. Johnson really getting some shots up now with Jackson on the bench. Johnson, 6 of 13 from the field. Here's 15 points. Lewis fakes. He goes inside the turner. Get a hit, Big Matty. Scores. And have a listen to the home crowd for the Big Mac truck. The soft finish on the, the left hand. And the Big Mac truck siren, <laughs> siren goes off. De definitely a crowd favourite every time he scores a basket here at the House of Blues. And played some good minutes off the bench tonight as well. I think you talked about it with Carly Chatfield as well. But I think and the free throw. Three point play. The high arcing Andrew Parkinson free throw. But I think when Matt's on in short bursts, he can be really effective. Absolutely. Here's Bragg. Tough move to the baseline. I think Declan Sukup had a hand of his arm, hold of his arm. I think Matt Turner may have got him as well. And he's called on Turner. So two free throws to come with the margin at 27. He's quick, Steve. He is. He's got better as uh, as every Seville season rolls on. And um, I'm sure I heard some whispers about him looking at some development spots on some some NBL rosters. And um, I think he's still only about 22 or 23 years old from, is, yeah. from memory. So. Um, Mate, still, there's still a chance for him yet as Spatella does that customary one bad outlet pass again. Just needs to keep it simple here. Here's Bragg, Bragg, Bragg popping from long range. It's off the mark. Simpson will have a crack from the short corner and he hits it. So turnover, a missed block out, bad, bad 30 seconds for the Blues. And we talked about that Aubrey Wadonga game. It was about a 24 point margin at this point in time and the Bandits turned it on and some of the Blues' decision-making certainly helped them in that regard. So important. They lock down here. Swatella to Turner inside. He finishes. Uh, uh, the high-low the action. Truck. The here he goes. The Swatella to Turner high-low action. Beautiful Matt. pass by Swatella. A little high-low. Looking like that long system tornado <laughs> to Roberts to... Roberts to Roof or Roof to Roberts. So, a little bit of shock here, Paulo. 26 points up. Would have got good money to be 26 points up <laughs> three minutes ago in the uh, in the third quarter. But um, and everyone contributing. That's been the that's been the key. Getting points off points off the bench. Good minutes off the bench by um, by everyone. You know, Sukup hasn't has only scored the two points, but 10 minutes and three assists and played good defense. Great point guard play out of him and McCauley and everybody. I'm sure a couple of the young young fellas in there, Tristan Forsyth and Matt Theobald, who are a couple of our under under 20 players, are probably licking their lips, hoping the score gets up over 30, so they get a little bit a little bit of court time action. <laughs> um, so they'll be hoping that um, what, what we did against Aubrey, where we got up by 30 and they got it, they got it back, back to single, six, yeah, yeah. single figures. I think they'll be hoping we put the foot down and we're able to have some fun with the, some of the youngsters on the on the bench and just a different atmosphere tonight on the bench and guys really enjoying themselves and getting a chance to to be a little bit looser on the court, which is good to see. Now I'll give you there's some impressive numbers for the Blues: 48% from the field, 38% from the three-point line, 12 of 12 from the arc. But the one I think that sums up the game best: the Thunder have only had two offensive rebounds. You talk about players like Jackson and Johnson inside. To limit them to two is just outstanding as Mason Bragg buries the triple. Opens up his account from the outside. He's got five points for the night. And the Blues leading the rebounds by double figures is another big stat. Just keep them off that glass, like you said. And big Mac truck, Mac one hand. Oh, and he finishes. Did you see that? The one-handed one party finish. shot by the big fella. Is that... Is that our Vita Sabonis that's just checked into the game? It looked a little NBA Sabonis night. like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was almost what he did to Mark Bregge and John Dorge in the 96 Olympics. He just held them off with one hand and the scored old, with the, the other. Old, the old Big Mac truck sirens getting worn out tonight by uh, Nathaniel down there. Fantastic stuff. The local residents will be complaining about the truck leading off its air horn late at night. Oh, at we House love it here in the House of Blues. <laughs> Mason Bragg hasn't given up, though. He's still playing hard. A Tim, a Tim. Impressed us early with his 
quick burst of Good points. rotation, Benny Lewis and Spitala. Here's Kelly. Shot clock at seven. A Tim, a Tim inside. Little up fake, and he can't get it to go. And the desperation from Frankston is relentless here, and it has been for all 28 minutes so far. Definitely been the... Um the most all-round performance they've had all, all season, even better than the Aubrey game, I think. And Lewis wanted to let that one fly. He pulls up now. It's a long and one. Foul. He scores. He'll go to the line. Benny Lewis starting to fire. He is up to 18 points with a trip to the charity stripe to come. He knew that um, Bradley Simpson wasn't going to gonna be able to go off him, go with him off the dribble. So fantastic shot. Drew the foul. Back up to 27. He's been outstanding tonight, Lewis, really at both ends of the floor. And yeah, not surprisingly, it started with his defense. And so often, scorers who wait for the game to come to them offensively are often left waiting. And those who get the job oh, he'll done be, He'll be absolutely filthy on the missed free throw. He's been <laughs> shooting at a ridiculously high clip this year. So um, takes pride in, in leading the team in free throw percentage. So that one, that one will sting. I think that might have been the first miss of the night for the Blues, or the second miss only for the night. Look at those two big bulls playing. Oh, a high arcing shot from Johnson. Oh, great. Oh, oh just not that quite That was going to be showtime. Just a little bit more muscle on that one. Attempt, attempt from three. Nice looking shot from attempt. It doesn't go. Johnson inside. Oh, He's swatted man. by the Mack truck, and Jake McCauley's called. He says, who me? Oh, I'm not sure how... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how... Chris saw that one, but um, Chris Reed, we won't. We said this last week, we won't double cross. Chris Reed, one of the one of the better referees, definitely going around in this country. So, no question. shout out to his wife Joe, who'll be listening to the to the live feed. Oh, is that right? Yep. Well, excellent call there from Chris Reed. Yeah, excellent call. <laughs> so one twelve to go. It's twenty six points the difference, and as we said, you talk about the Blues' offense if you want, but holding. Northwest Tasmania to 44 points in almost 30 minutes of basketball is just extraordinary defense. So Lewis, he's got that matchup with the Tim at Tim as well, and I think the Tim has done quite a good job defensively on Benny. This time I give the guy a wrap, he loses him, and Benny connects. Nothing but nylon from Benny Lewis. He's he passes 20 points. Margin he's got that look in his eye tonight, Benny too. I think he's he's eyeing off 30. Here's Kelly. Nice little hesitation. Tim and Tim recovers. Shot clock into single figures. Simpson fires. Misses. And Spitala just chairman of the boards tonight. Rebound number 12 for Big Dane. Great to see him respond. He had two two bad games last week. He won't be um, he won't be won't dislike me saying that. And he's bounced back in a big way against a really good team. So fantastic effort. Cawley with a hesitation, finds Lewis on the bounce to the pull-up. Doesn't go, but Brad Simpson called for the foul. There'll be free throws to come for Rob Jones, who was a standout in the first half. He's been a little quiet. Yeah, he hasn't, hasn't got got going offensively in the um, in the second half. Had, only had a, maybe one or two shots this, uh, this quarter, so just getting a cider on his free throw now. <laughs> he just gave a practice free throw, so... Better not miss any of these ones. But I, I reckon Randy Bennett, the St Mary's coach, will be tuning into the live stream, Paulo, and um, getting an update. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure, Randy um, would agree with us that Rob's won the battle out of um, him and Garrett Jackson. I'm not sure if we'll see Garrett no, we for the rest of the game. We haven't seen him since. He Came down from that contest in a bit of pain. And that, that'd be a good pairing, the two of those two on the same um, Seaball so team, I'd imagine. Are you are uh, planning some ideas, are you, Steve? Well, I'm not, not sure about that. <laughs> as long as the, as long as the, the uh, Thunder don't get any ideas of stealing the Rob Jones. Well, I'm sure they're pretty happy. Well, it's funny. It hasn't been a great it's night. It's not the night. worst idea to... Um, and I'm surprised more Seaball teams. It's happened occasionally, but they haven't recruited two Americans yes. from there, yeah, from the same college where they've got that relationship and it actually makes a lot of sense. It's like the Southern Melbourne Sweat Hog Saints recruited Ed Stokes and, or Gary Stokes and, and uh, 
and pain yep. were college teammates yep. back in 1991 and that's three quarter time i'll come back from the past into the present it's 73 to 44 the frankston blues we wondered whether they could maintain the rage in the third quarter after such a good first half they took it up another level didn't they they really did fantastic quarter 29 point lead at three quarter time I know the, uh, the difference between the men and the women tonight is that the men have continued with the system that they've, that's worked and they've defended and they've taken good shots, and whereas the, the girls kind of went away from what was working and I can't see them losing a 20-point lead in this last quarter, but I guarantee you Coach Wallace will be out there um, at three-quarter time telling the players to finish this game off, that it's important. As we see the uh, three-quarter time, we're having a little... Uh, NBA theme night, best dress competition. I think should have um, should have grabbed my um, my retro Kevin Durant uh, singlet out there. Had you let me know, I might have rocked out my Harold Miner Miami Heat singlet. I couldn't have brought as I, as I hand, with it. As I hand um, Mark, Mark Quinn an NBL, so he, he can go out there and uh, win his Is singlet. That Sonics. Yeah, got this um, got this singlet. It's actually an official. Seattle Sonics training singlet 35, which was obviously made famous by uh, Kevin Durant when he went to the to the Sonics, but it was actually given to me by a famous um, blues player, uh, Steve Stewart, that played in 1998. Of um, one of the best imports has played for this club. His brother, great, great team with Scott Mitchell, uh, Darren yep. Lucas, yep. Um, the Chief. Steve was, yep, Steve was, Steve Chris was McKinnon. definitely, Steve was definitely one of the uh, the better imports has played in this country and. Uh, his brother played with the Sonics, so his brother played in the NBA for about 10 years and bounced around from clubs and managed to get one of the, the training jerseys. So I was going to rock out there and try and win a hat myself. They don't give out too much stuff here at the Blues. <laughs> of course, there was a handy backcourt in that 98-99 that team. Steve Blackley and Reese. Oh, I was going to say Reese Newsom and Darren Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Darren Lucas went all right, although he played. He was like a point centre. Yeah, he, he played, he played, played anywhere. He just... Put him on a point guard or a five man, didn't matter. He was just going to outplay everyone. As um, they're handing out some um, some blues hats out there, and oh, I like the John Stockton singlet out there. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's you don't that's see too school. many Johnny Stockton singlets. That might be Jackson Young, one of our under 22s player, who's coming with me in a couple of weeks' time on a on an AAU tour of uh, the US. I think we leave on the 4th of July. So, Johnny Stockton, I met Johnny Stockton. Um, when was that? That start of January on our Women's USA Tour. He's, he's former high school. He was at the game and managed to have a few words and a photo taken with him. So, I was pretty happy to meet the uh, all-time leader in assistant NBA night. It's just going on the NBA team there, Paul. Absolutely. Well, if I'd met John Stockton, I'd be telling you all about yeah, it, too. Yeah, it was um, good times. It, it was a hard man to get a few words out of. But, um, and then I, I did happen to see him a couple of days later at the uh, Gonzaga University game and gave him a wave and stuff. And I think he thought I was stalking him. Which you were, of course. Yeah, as you would with John Stockton. The, the 10 posts on his Facebook page were a bit of a giveaway. Uh, as we're back underway here in the third quarter, you wouldn't know it, but we are. Some good defense again from the Blues. They haven't taken the foot off. How about that? 29 points in front, and first possession getting, of the final still, quarter, shot clock violation. Still getting some um, still getting some, some possessions and really d it up down there. Gone back with the start. Oh, no, four of the five starters. Jack Wilson has checked in. So Jack didn't do too much wrong, just was hard with the other the other players rolling so well. So McCauley, Lewis, Jones, Swatella and Wilson on the floor. Simpson and Johnson in the front court. Here's McCauley to the lane. That's a tough left-hander. From Jake, he was three or three. He thought, why not? And he got a smile on his face when he <laughs> threw that one up. He was he was allowed to throw that one up after the game he's played so far. There's a three-pointer from Barker. It's off the mark, and Wilson with the hustle on the boards. And I tell you, I've played a lot of one-on-one -on -one with Jake over the years, so he can make that shot. It's very annoying, yep. especially on game point when you do everything right <laughs> defensively. Here's Lewis. Nice uh -oh. crossover down uh -oh. the middle. Oh, oh my goodness gracious me! He, he, tried, he tried to go DeAndre Jordan on him and tried to dunk from about 10 feet out. That would have Good been the Lord. dunk of the decade, I think, from Benny and, Lewis. And ben, Benny's annoyed that he missed it. <laughs> wow we. That oh. was massive. <laughs> Here's Lewis. He's going again. 
Oh, great nice pass. Nice feed. Wilson with a little mid-ranger. It's off the mark. Jones inside. He could Larry Bird that over the backboard if he wanted, but he chooses to reset Great, Wallace wants, wants him to play, wants him to run something here. Oh, Good nice. move. Really and that nice. was the difference between, again, the men and the women. They got an offensive rebound. They pulled it out. They got a good look out of it. The women were forcing stuff. So smart play by the by the men's blues team. Great seal by Jones and a really nice post feed from McCauley. And the rest right in the scoreboard because it's 75 to 46. Here's this great oh, matchup again. That's it. Johnson inside. He bumped Swatella out that of the was... way. And Dave Swatella gets a flop warning. <laughs> Chris Clark. How do you get? <laughs> got hit in the head. A remarkable bit of refereeing there. How do you get a, a flop warning when you got take one to the chop? You just got to look at the size of the shoulders of Gary Johnson to know there was no flopping needed there. And I like the fact it wasn't called a foul. Let the big boys yeah, bang. But, but don't give him a flop warning. Flop warning. Yeah. Hey, you're, the referees are allowed to make some mistakes. That's absolutely true. And three quality referees here yep. tonight. And it has been an outstanding refs. called game. Here's Benny Lewis. He's backing in. Tough fadeaway. Sure. It was some good help defense there. I think that was from Chilcot. In fact, it was from Lockie Barker coming across. Here's Simpson against Swatella. Oh, nice spin move baseline. He just didn't finish the job, but that's yeah. some good post play. So seven minutes still to go. It's a 27 point difference. And I'm sure the Blues are going to enjoy having a little bit of party time. It's, that's a nice step back from Rob Jones, but it was short. I think in the last couple of plays, he's kind of gone away from the offense a little bit, so I think Grant Wallace will be uh, a little upset with that. Some nice handles from the big fella, and Swatella gets his hand caught in the cookie, cookie a jar. I think that's foul number five on day. No, in fact, it's foul number two. Obviously reading the, long, the wrong line on the stat sheet. That's poor old Angus Howie. He's got four, four <laughs> fouls in 90 seconds. So Mike McInnes back into the game. I think the thing to cap this night, with all the motion around it and the great performance that's followed, is for Mike to hit a couple of three-pointers. No, absolutely. We've, and we've seen Jake McCauley do his bit. And I spoke with the, the Frankston Blues GM at uh, halftime. His, his words were, the only thing we need to see now is a, a couple of our under-20 kids that are making their debuts to get on tonight, which the way things are going, it looks like they'll get a, get a couple of minutes there. Our under-20 players... Um, Probably think we suit three or four of them up every Friday, every every weekend, and they compete for positions. So um, the two that have been suiting up tonight uh, might get a chance to to get some action. So it's exciting times. Spitello gets a double team. Nice patience from Dane, and now it is Mike McInnes who's wide open, but just left it short. And now away we go. Chilcot straight down, McInnes. and Mike McInnes with the block. He came from out of nowhere. Got his fingertips on that one, and the Blues not ready to concede anything just yet. Oh, nice V. Jones is open. Doesn't fire. Strong move Ooh. from the big fella. It was a little bit like a glacier steaming down towards yeah. the ocean. He couldn't quite finish the job. Oh, he put the afterburners on there, didn't he, Mason? He certainly did. Strong drive from Barker. Draws a foul on McKinnon, who, McKinnis, who was going for back-to-back -back blocks. See Josh Oswald in. Still no sign of the youngsters from the Blues just yet. I think Coach Wallace is pretty keen to have a real 40-minute performance yep. where they do everything right regardless of the scoreboard because it has been the final 10 minutes that have been the real Achilles no, absolutely. heel. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think we'll see any of those, any of those young kids um, until at least the last, under the last two minutes, I'd, I'd imagine, which, which would be smarter when you... Struggling for wins, I think you want to finish it out and try and get a commanding win. I think they also want to get Benny Lewis some room so he can take off again and try and finish what he started a few plays ago. Perhaps we need and it seems like we give a shout out to, to Benny Lewis Sr. all the time. He, again, the professor would have been mightily impressed with that attempted dunk. Well, maybe he'd just tell his son off for not finishing it. There's, oh, Josh Oswald with the right to left crossover and the pull up triple. Josh has had a nice, quite a, a, an effective game. Low, low oh, oh, nice take. The move. Oh, couldn't finish through contact, and that'll be a Blues ball. 
Declan Sukup into the game. Jake McCauley. Again, will those, sit down. those two point guards pretty much playing about five minutes each, each quarter, doing a fantastic job filling in for. Uh, and they've had six assists and no turnovers between them. Yep. Which is quite impressive the way Mason Bragg has been harassing them all night long to not have coughed the ball up. Oswald looking inside for Jones, but I really like the patience and the movement. I, the was just thinking the, I was just thinking the same thing that Oswald could have pulled the trigger on it, but um, showed some patience, run some clock, and good decision in the end. Mason Bragg felt a little bit of contact on the drive. He fell over backwards and he got a call on that one. Probably more of a flop than Dane a couple <laughs> of possessions ago, I would have, would have imagined. I think the exciting news for Australian basketball is Scott Butler being appointed the head referee for the NBL. Of course, arguably the greatest ref Australia's had, so hopefully he can really have an impact in that role over the coming year or two. As Benny Lewis comes up with the steal. Simpson's still fighting on the ground, and that'll be, that'll be a Frankston ball. Mike McInnes down there getting a little dusty on the floor as well. So still... Two starters on the floor for Frankston. They haven't given this one away yet. Gary Johnson's still out there for... Well, I think for the Blues, it's been fantastic. They go into next weekend with a bye, the long weekend, um, with a bit of confidence. And this group has not splintered once um, so far this season. So um, hopefully tonight with their third win, they'll be able to equal the, the amount of wins they had for the entire season. So for the rest of the season, I'll be playing with house money, Paulo. <laughs> Yeah, let's, when you put it that way, I mean, here comes Rob Jones, spinning, nice move. The patience in the light post, and Mike oh. McKinnis with the tip, and he says, forget about the three-pointers. I'm going to do some work around the rim. It wasn't quite above the rim, it may have been above the net. There's Bragg getting inside, McKinnis shuts him down. He's doing a bit haven't of everything been, Haven't been able to crack that 30-point margin, up to 29 again. There's Chilcott, pulls up. Nice move. Beautiful finish from Joe Chilcott. Under some physical defensive pressure and he cuts it to 27. So Gary Johnson is the only player in double figures for the Thunder. The ball movement's been a lot better this... this. There is Mike. No, there we go. Get into the low block. Keep moving. Good Shot cut. Four. McKinnis down the Good middle. Good job. The foul. Heads up play from Mike McKinnis. Then Gary, Gary Chevrolet standing in the corner with a beer in hand cheering on Mike. And I spoke to Gary at the uh, halftime break. And he said, let's just get over this line and get a, get a win, finish it off. So he'll be, he's liking what he sees out there. And just, just a great thing these players can do for the Chevrolet family. You know, in such a, a tragic time, there are small things, but being able to come to the basketball and watch such an outstanding performance. Absolutely. It's just a little thing, paying tribute to Michael and just taking the mind off those things a little bit for yep. the family. And we had a fantastic crowd in for the for the game as well. So a lot of a lot of support for the for the Chevs and it'll continue continue on. Dennis nails the free throw, he shakes his head, he's not happy with missing and he, He's played a great game tonight, Mike, as well. Five points, five and, boards for yep. Mike. Here's Bragg and again good defense. to the baseline. Oh, oh, my goodness, the floating right hand. That was, that was really nice, wasn't it? <laughs> it was like a mix between a runner I mean, and a You couldn't have floater. defended it. We had early help and little Steph Curry-like there with that floater. Oh, Benny Lewis shakes the defense. Unselfish to Oswald. McKinnis on the O-boards again. He's really done a great job on the boards, Mike. He's kept it a couple of times. He's tipped it out and kept the ball alive. Absolutely. That's his third O board as well as those tips as Rob Jones bounces to the middle and draws the foul on Gary Johnson. Rob's had a good all-round game tonight as well. Some great passing out of the post and definitely the best he's defended all, all season as well. Fortunately, his shot as the game has worn on has just deserted him a little bit again. Five of 18. And yep. I'm sure he'd be frustrated with the way he shot the ball since arriving down here at Frankston. But it's not through lack of practice. He's in the gym every day, getting his getting his reps up. And um, good thing tonight is up to nine rebounds and nearly nearly a double double. So three assists as well. He yep. always puts together a few assists. And, you know, 15, nine, and three. That's not a bad game by anyone's stretch. Plus 13 on the rebounds is huge for the Blues tonight. Mike 
Josh Oswald almost with a steal. Chilcott goes back to that left-handed pull-up. He's, un he's, he's unorthodox, but he's, he's really effective. I he really, really like his game. He shoots that from so high up, too. It's, it's difficult to defend. I believe he's back from college. I'm pretty sure he's at, a, at college and on break at the moment. So, Oh, that hurt. <laughs> There's not much meat on those bones to protect him. So, so 2.34 to play. It's a 26-point margin, I guess. The last bit of real interest as we see Matt Turner and Jake McCauley check back in is can the Blues get to the 100 mark? It's been a while since they've cracked triple figures. They'd have some work to do to get there, but <laughs> I think they'll be more in, they'll be more happy if they can um, keep Northwest Tasmania in the uh, in the 60s and at 57 at the moment, it's been outstanding. Is that a social commentary about keeping Northwest Tasmania in the 60s, or are you talking about the scoreline? <laughs> Rob Jones. Yeah, no pun intended. Give a shout out to one of my best mates, Clint Proctor, who's the coach of the Burnie Dockers in the Tassie State League, the footy down there. I love they're, their football down in Tasmania. They do. They're atop the ladder. They were playing third place Glenorchy today, so I hope the Dockers had a win. That's my way of making it back up to the, <laughs> the fans in northwest Tassie as Chilcott fires. So Grant Wallace, I think, will be ready to ready to pull Benny and Rob Jones out any minute now. He'll be looking, hopefully, to get a couple of these under-20s into the game. Now called there on Bragg. So just over two minutes to go. In fact, that last attempt came from Lockie Barker. Here's McCauley. Still running plays all the way through to the game, which has been outstanding tonight. To a horn set. Matt Turner inside. Nice feed back out to McCauley. He's hit two. He has hit three. Look at, triple and look at big Gary. McCauley. Look at Gary. Oh, and <laughs> and <laughs> Gary Shem gave the moon Michael Jackson <laughs> moonwalk on that one. 11 points for Jake McCauley, a perfect three of three from outside, and now the Mack truck is on the boards. And I must admit, um, it's been, been great to see Matt Turner, Mike McInnes, and Jake McCauley play so outstanding tonight. Basketball God's been with us tonight. Here's Benny Lewis. McCauley again. Oh, extra pass. He gives it back. Too unselfish. <laughs> Too unselfish. Shot clock at three. Benny won't, won't Benny worry about it. He'll get elevates, it Elevates. Fires. It's just long. So sometimes you can be a little too unselfish, but that's really typified the way the Blues have played tonight. One minute to play. We're not going to see the kids. I don't, I don't think, think we're seeing the kids. <laughs> maybe maybe now. The dead ball. Let's check them in. Here they come. Here they come. Here Looks they like come. The Big Tristan. Beautiful. Getting his first Siebel minutes. Rob Jones sits down with a smile. And that Thiebold. Benny Lewis, he applauds the crowd. He sends some applause down in the direction of the Chevs. And then the referee, Chris Reid, steps in and says, no, you can't have the sub. We might wait for it. That's what you call party pooping. So second free throw here for Lucas Simpson. He gets that here to go. Comes. Take two. Benny Lewis sits down this time with a little less fanfare. Matty Theobald making his debut. Gets a big round of applause entering the game. Frankston Jr. all the way through. Let's see if we can get him a shot. Here he is with his first touch and he's I greeted think by I Gary Johnson. Welcome to the Siebel. And he turns oh, he, got his he got his first stat anyway, Paul. <laughs> he won't be a billionaire, that's and, for sure. Oh, there he got a steal as well. Good hustle. He gets the steal. And he made up for it. <laughs> the crowd applauds. They have enjoyed the hustle of the Frankston locals tonight. I bet Jake McCauley just said, if you're open, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always as a good been veteran would do. <laughs> I know back when I played, you always tried to um, look after the young kids when they came in if you could. Tristan won't hesitate if he's open either. There's McCauley from the corner. He takes his own advice. That one's long. And with 20 seconds to go. Might be the last opportunity for the Blues. No, McKinnis creates one more. Here we oh, go. Here we go. The here we go. Is on the break. Inside. Can he finish with the left? Oh, he can't. Goes again. It was, it was going to be the layup and the assist. <laughs> oh, it'll be Frankston ball. The hey, Gary applauds. got the ball. <laughs> <laughs> the Gary Shev got the, the loose effort. ball in the corner. 
So four seconds to play, one last chance for the Frankston youngsters to get on the board. It's a 28 point margin, looking. can they make it 30? McInnes, last opportunity, McCauley from the top gives it up. And <laughs> that is all she wrote. They couldn't get the fairy tale finish, but it's been a fairy tale night here at the Frankston Basketball Stadium. It's a standing round of applause from many in the crowd here. And the final score, 86 to 58 to the Blues. They have done Michael Chivalry proud. It's exactly the tribute they wanted to pay to their mate. It was an emotional start to the night, but the Blues channeled that emotion in the best way possible. They were on from the start. They never let up. 28 point winners by far and away their best performance of the season. Steve Blackwell, what do you got to say? Well, I think it was just a, yeah, like you said, an, emo an emotional week. I, I think just we called you Steve Blackwell. That's all right. Steve. That's all right. You can call me anything. <laughs> but um, I think it was, it shows the perseverance of the group that uh, they were able to fight through everything. I think they won all four quarters as well. It was a four quarter effort, which was fantastic. Um, this group has not splintered from day one with, you know, some losing streaks in there and, and that sort of thing. They're unified, they train hard, they work hard, They're, they are together and it showed on the court tonight. It was a fantastic result for them um, to go into that break and uh, fantastic night of basketball for the Blues. I think the Blues have done themselves proud with the with the entire night and the entire week and with all the circumstances going on there. So um, I know the bar's open late tonight, Paulo. <laughs> they've, they've extended the uh, operation hours of the bar and. Um, yeah, pretty excited about that. So um, any of our listeners that are listening that want to come down and have a drink with, uh, with the players, we're going to be here for a little while longer and a good way to um, celebrate the, uh, the life of Michael Chevley and talk about some of his uh, the, some stories from his, his playing days and things like that. And great to see so many former old Blues players around here. A lot of, lot of support from our juniors tonight in, the, um, in attendance as well. So unfortunately, I only got the one, one out of two. Should have had the two out of two, but... Um, a great result for the for the men's team. It's been a great example of how important sport is to local communities. You see the way people have rallied around. It, it really has been a fairy tale story. And we look at the leading scorers for the night. Let's run through the numbers. Benny Lewis, he was on fire at times. He had 20 points, six rebounds, three assists, and the dunk attempt of the season. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite get it to fit, but he had a standout night. Dane Swatella was the man who really set the tone. 15 points and 12 rebounds. He had an absorbing battle inside with Gary Johnson. Rob Jones also had a great first half. He finished with 15 points, 9 rebounds and 3 assists. And Jake McCauley in his best game of the season. 10 points, 3 rebounds and 3 assists for Jake. He played some great defense. He, he led the way. He ran the show. A really good performance from Jake. And we look on the other side of the ledger. We look at Gary Johnson. He never stopped trying all night long. He had 19 points and 14 rebounds. He lost his mate Garrett Jackson to what looked like a shoulder or elbow injury. Well, the, well, I think the big play in the game was the um, was the third foul that he got in that um, in that first quarter. That really you know, the Blues definitely had that momentum at that stage, but that third foul really hurt him, and he had to go out of the game and could never get never get any momentum going whatsoever after that stage and then copped in a shot, some sort of shoulder injury as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, the two imports holding them to 18 points between the two of them was a, was a huge result. Probably the next best for Northwest Tasmania was Mason Bragg. Eight points, four boards, two steals, and the intensity he played with for the entire night was really impressive. And as you said, it wouldn't be surprising to have NBL teams looking at him for a development spot just because of the way he plays defense and yep. his physical conditioning. No, absolutely. So, um, yeah, some high-end high, high end talent. Benny Lewis wouldn't have done himself any harm either with the game that he played. And um, I think everyone that took court took the court tonight for the Blues contributed in some some kind of form so it was a um, an all-round effort which was outstanding for the for the Frankston Blues and probably you know even even our win against Aubrey probably not we didn't we probably got contributions from three or four but this is probably the first night where everyone's played well and everyone's played their role and, um, and, and fantastic everyone, stuff and everyone contributed at the defensive yep. end keeping them to 58, 58 points, points is um a ridiculous number in against a talented offensive team it must be said you know it wasn't as if they're playing against any stiffs out there and holding any Seabull team to 58 is outstanding but um, 
Yeah, fabulous stuff. A couple of other special mentions for the Blues. Matt Turner with seven points and four rebounds. Mike McInnes with five points and five boards. It was a memorable night. The Blues did their bit. They rallied, rallied around a family of their own and they delivered a massive 86 to 58 victory. That's all we've got time for on Blues Basketball Media. We're back in three weeks' time here at the House of Blues. We look forward to your company then.